Hello, um, I, my name is Andreas Klostermann, and in this talk I will talk about brainwaves and how we as Python hackers can use our tools to explore our own brains a bit. Uh, last year at EuroPython I held the 1.0 version of this talk. Uh, this year I have uh, only 30 minutes, so I'm going to uh, make extremely short uh, thrift of uh, the theory behind brainwaves, but we have to cover a bit of it so that every one of you understands what we are doing here, but the talks don't have a lot of overlap, so this is really 2.0. Um, now, first of all, what are brainwaves actually? Uh, brainwaves are an electrophysiological uh, potential that you measure on your scalp. That basically uh, is a voltage um, measurement which is measured over time uh, with electrodes that are on the scalp. And what you are measuring there is um, the summed potential of most or even all your brain cells, uh, which give off electrical signals to communicate with each other, but also uh, a bit of waste energy gets, uh, energy gets uh, transmitted outwards, and so you can uh, uh, measure it on, on the skin without having to go inside the skull. Um, most of what, uh, the, the most useful analysis of brainwaves usually is uh, the Fourier transform, which basically only means that uh, we assume that the signal is composed of several uh, frequencies and we want to know which frequency is dominant. And by doing that, uh, we can infer something about what the brain is doing because we know, okay, we, when, certain, when a certain frequency range is overrepresented, then uh, the, the, the uh, subject is, for example, concentrated or relaxed or that, that kind of information. Now, to measure this, uh, this current, uh, we need an electroencephalogram. Um, and these devices can be quite um, cumbersome and quite expensive, but what I have here is basically the NeuroSky MindWave Mobile, which is a Bluetooth-connected headset, uh, really low-powered and very optimized for developers and hackers. Um, it does all the amplification stuff um, inside this uh, headset and digitalizes the data. It also does some prelim preliminary analysis of the data so that you could even connect this to an Arduino and the Arduino would be able to tell uh, if you're concentrated or not. Uh, and Arduinos are not really sophisticated processors or software in any case, so that's quite nice. Um, I wrote a physiology framework and that is a framework for physiological experiments and analysis. It currently mostly only supports um, mind wave EEG, but eventually I also have code for uh, ECG from Bitalino, but that's not activated currently. It's powered by SciPy Pi data, and, and it's IPython Jupyter enabled. So uh, what I want to achieve is um, an experimentation platform that works for do-it-yourself people who don't have a lab, uh, fancy equipment or something, but I want to use mainly the uh, do it, uh, these um, quantified self-type devices uh, with Bluetooth connections or other near-field stuff. Um, it's currently Python 3.4 only, and I'm ha making heavily use of async IO. Now, you probably heard of the Internet of Things. Um, the basic idea is that, uh, uh, that you have um, local computers connected to um, some kind of sensor, and there is a pattern that I see in emerging in these data acquisition uh, applications. So you have a local component where it very much matters where the computer is, like a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or something, because it has to be right next to the device um, because of the low range of the sensor. Then there is a cloud component which actually analyzes the data, uh, and there it does not matter where it is, just that it is uh, connected over a network. And the user interface is connected also to cloud and local and um, displays the data, and the user can interact with the analysis. And in my case, the local component is just um, an async IO data server that I've written. It communicates over, over Bluetooth with, um, with this thing here, and it also babysits the connection, so if I switch it off and uh, switch it on again, then it will reconnect and try uh, to fix errors. 
And that's quite nice to have to, that separated from the IPython kernel, which is the cloud component, um, because it's difficult to deal uh, for the user to deal with all the exceptions that occur in uh, Bluetooth. And uh, we have most of the data processing inside uh, the kernel then. Um, and the kernel pushes data to the user interface, which is a browser. So in an IPython notebook uh, like this one, you have um, the server, the kernel, and, um, and the user interface, and uh, they are somewhat separated, but you need a server for Python anyway. Now I'm going to quickly show you a real-time demonstration. So this is junk, junk data because uh, nothing was connected. And now if we are lucky, now this is real, also I, I will be uh, silent for a moment so that you can appreciate normal brain waves. The problem with uh, EEG also is that the brain waves themselves are so, so weak that pretty much everything in, going on inside um, or in your head, all the muscles, the facial muscles and um, eye muscles all contribute artifacts to the data and are stronger than the actual brainwave data. I can show you that I can uh, clench my teeth, which are like the strongest muscle in, uh, in the head. I can also use my uh, eyes to Yeah, and when I blink, and that makes EEG signals uh, very difficult to analyze. Also, this is a bokeh uh, graph. I'm using IPython widgets to push data um, from the kernel to the notebook, and also the kernel is running in async IO uh, loop internally so that it can communicate over WebSocket with my data uh, server, which handles the Bluetooth stuff. And now I have stopped and then I can go to the next slide. Now let's do some data science. Data scientist is who data science does. So we need some data for that. And uh, to, to get good data, we need experiments because discovery requires experimentation. And this is a central idea in the physiology framework. Um, that is this experiment stuff. The experiment um, is here initialized and then immediately used as a decorator, much like the IPython notebook interact one. And this decorator will, when, when I start it, um, it will wait for data from the server and whenever there's new data, this handle message is called, and it can then, does, uh, it can then do its thing to wh do whatever. In this case, it just display clear output, uh, means the output is cleared, and then some HTML is written with the last attention data. So attention is a value that is computed by the new Sky MindWave itself inside the headset. And I can show you how that works. And that is really all it takes. So this is a value between zero and 100. Currently, it thinks I'm to totally inattentive, but I can uh, push that higher. Well, sometimes it doesn't work that <laughs> nice. Uh, but we don't have time to uh, do that. Now, experiment classes have these attributes like attention as a time series. So every second or so, uh, the, such a value is uh, um, computed by the device and sent over Bluetooth, and I try to figure out when that was, but uh, it's a bit difficult to do that. And in any case, the Pandas time series um, stuff is really good, and so it's just accumulating in this experiment. Also the raw data, the meditation data, and different, several other things are also um, com communicated and stored. Now, 
that was one thing running experiments in real time, but we also like to record data. Um, that is done by uh, giving it a file name, and uh, that is a HDR5 file. In this case, I think I have a bug because uh, I have like one or two gigabytes of data, and that's it's uh, completely crazy. I have to fix that later. Um, in any case, um, this is the same as before, but it displays the amount of raw data, which is here len experiment raw over 512, because the raw data is at 512 samples per second. And now let's record some raw data. I think it's not working currently. In any case, um, now to resurrect the data, we need um, a so-called batch class. And the batch class can resurrect the data then. And now, um, here we have recorded data from another session, which just is much the same as the experiment. Um, I forgot to tell you what actually a batch is. Every time I run the experiment, I record a different batch. So first time, batch uh, zero, second time, batch one. And that way, um, experiments don't overwrite their own data. And you can also try to vary the um, experimental conditions um, if you want to do that. Now, I'd like to show you a exper simple experiment. I don't have time for a lot of them, so I'd only do one. Uh, so the NeoSky MindWave computes these eSense meditation attention values. They are sort of uh, patented and uh, sort of black box algorithms where they, they don't really tell us uh, what they are doing there. And here I'm uh, transforming the time series data to a table of features. So I don't have time to really explain what's going on there, but I take windows of um, sort of windows of the time series data. Then I compute how strong different brain wave frequencies are, and have in the same row I also have the raw uh, the, the, the attention and the meditation values. Uh, I wrote a um, separate library which is Table Cleaner. Uh, and we need that to clean some of the data up because some of the data is um, bad. Uh, as I told you before, um, we have lots of artifacts in the data and we don't want to analyze um, artifacts. We want to analyze real EEG data. So this table cleaner library is um, inspired by Django forms and cleans tabular data. The uh, nice thing is it outputs both a validated data set and a data set of the errors. So um, on the bottom we see a table of the uh, grouped um, validation errors and their reasons. And the most rows, 206 rows, were deleted uh, because um, there was too much variation in the EEG data. So when, the EEG is, uh, when there's an artifact, then uh, we try to remove that. Uh, that, that row of the table. Also, poor signal is computed by the, brain, uh, by the mind wave itself, but that's not so important in this case. So if you need uh, a data validation thing, maybe you should look into it. Um, now I'm doing the linear regression analysis. So I said we have features of uh, brain waves correlated with attentional meditation data. And the linear regression, all it does is it tries to explain uh, the attention value or the meditation value in terms of the frequency strength. So it multiplies each, fre each frequency with a coefficient and then uh, they, they are all summed up. And that way, to f when, they, when you figure out the coefficient, you know how important the, di the different frequencies are for this uh, value. And uh, you can't, probably can't read um, the labels on the graph, but I didn't have time to make that any better. Um, what, what you may actually see is that we have here the, the best or the highest and most significant coefficients are at the, what was that? Okay. Um, are in the high betas or in the beta frequencies from 17 hertz upwards. You can't see that, but just, uh, just um, 
just believe me when I tell you that there's a certain range of frequencies which is called beta frequencies between 17 and I think 30 um, hertz def um, depending on the definition and they are strongly associated with all sorts of attention and concentration stuff. So uh, if you ever heard about the prefrontal cortex and the tension um, uh, circuits of the brain, also ADHD that has a lot to do with, uh, with beta brain waves. Now um, I'd like to meditate a bit about meditation. Um, there's a similar graph, but we have more going on. Um, here we have the alpha values, which are between, in this case, are between like eight and 10, around eight and 10 hertz, which are significant, but also some beta values, which are a bit undecided. I think that's because most of the time I or others too uh, need to, to do some concentration to enhance uh, alpha values uh, and during waking state, you need to have a somewhat calm mind to actually uh, exhib exhibit um, alpha waves or you close your eyes, which is also easy, but that's not what we want to do. Um, in any case, these values are used in neurofeedback. So you can write an application that looks for attention or meditation and uh, feed it back to you. And then you can learn how to consciously manipulate uh, these brain states. That's what I, th I was talking about last year at, uh, um, Euro Python in Berlin, um, 2014, and there's also a YouTube um, recording of the uh, talk which, where I go into more detail about the psychology and biology behind um, all this uh, neurofeedback stuff. So this all sort of um, implies, uh, so the linear regression implies that the strengths of the frequencies are not dependent on each other. And I don't know why that, uh, I, I'm not getting, going to get it to work. Um, any case, these are correlated and we see that um, um, the alpha and the beta values are correlated among each other, um, but not between the alpha and the beta waves. And well, it, it has some biological meaning, but I'm not going to go into that. I'd like to make some technical remarks. Bluetooth is really bad for timing. So if you have um, Bluetooth data coming in, they don't come often, often don't come with timestamps. And these timestamps, uh, you have to give them, them timestamps at the local component in the server, data server, and figure out which are the right timestamps. And, and if you do it wrong, then you have like overlapping data and crossing your own timeline is strictly forbidden, except for cheap tricks. Um, yeah. I think IO is very good for weighting and problem resolution. So you can do like yield from weight and well, yield from sleep. And uh, so I do, so I can write these troubleshooting algorithms with reconnecting and I can wait for a few seconds and then reconnect again uh, without disturbing anything else. Um, the combination of bokeh and notebook widget really uh, rocks because um, this notebook has its own WebSocket push uh, communication channel, uh, which I can use to um, stream data to the JavaScript site and update the book uh, um, charts. And in general, Jupyter Notebook is a really great tool to tell computational narratives. I rather um, skipped that or I rather went hastily through my little computational narrative about the brainwaves and about attention and meditation, but I didn't really have time for more. But you can imagine that you can do a real-time um, experiment or um, show how the computation works and also explain or narrate how the data really works. Also, it's a lot, uh, the, the, the physiology framework is an example of a library for the notebook, which really is bigger on the inside. So I just had this uh, experiment decorator and it hides, hides all this WebSocket and async IO and other magic, uh, mostly from the user. So I'd like to thank you for your attention. And my Twitter handle is Beijing Horse, which was a few years ago supposed to be a pun of 
uh, Trojan horse or something, but now it just sounds silly. <laughs> um, my library is Biology. I just um, published it. It's very raw, and you probably won't get it to work, um, especially unless you have this uh, device. By the way, uh, resistance is futile. <laughs> um, this table cleaner library, I try to um, make it a bit bigger because uh, I have had a lot of trouble over the times validating CSV data, and that is sort of my uh, attempt to fix that problem. In any case, I wrote also this notebook assets library, which I use for, um, for turning CoffeeScript into JavaScript and serving it from the actual library itself and not from the extension stuff, which I find a bit troublesome because the IPython uh, notebook profile di directory has no clear one-on-one -on -one, uh, direct uh, connection to the, the Python library installation stuff. And it's basically all. Thank you for your attention, and we have time for some questions, maybe. But you, when you want to go to the lightning talks, uh, okay. I tried to do some stuff with the uh, with the MindWave uh, mm. years ago, uh, but I'm guessing that I, your framework didn't exist then because then I had to connect via some some proprietary Bluetooth executable that I had to wrap stuff up around. So so does your Python code do the Bluetooth stuff? Yes. Also, uh, the current documentation for MindWave points to my older libraries for MindWave. So. Um, it's a bit difficult to do, and I think what uh, the newer Sky stuff is doing isn't really that developer friendly on the library side, but the protocol is very friendly. Any other questions? So, uh, if, if I want to get in one of these newer Sky things, is that I just had a brief look at the web page. Is it the New Sky MindWave Mobile, which is the one to get? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think that's the best device. There is one that is a bit more expensive and more variable, but um, I think the New Sky MindWave Mobile is the best one for like 100 or 120 euros yeah. currently. You can also get it on Amazon and other uh, shops. And you only need the, the device itself. You don't need any of their software or anything. No, you just use. Not at all. Okay, great. Some people even uh, wire up Arduinos directly to the um, sync your ship. Yeah. So as we as we have some time, um, would you mind to show the code uh, for the, part, the demo part, and maybe the demo itself? Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, this I want to publish this uh, the notes, but I wasn't able to. Um, to push it yet from this network. And it contains a lot of notes um, of what I was talking about, which are not visible in the presentation itself. Um, so here's a hidden uh, code with a real-time raw demo. And but to, to know what's going on, here's this normal bokeh, uh, let's make a plot stuff. And then it's the raw source, bokeh model source, column data source which is um, important to have a reference to it. And then, ah, I'm my touchpad. Um, now, in the handle message one, I, I'm doing some resampling, and then I push the data, uh, then I convert the data to this raw source data on this Python side, but the bokeh knows it's, uh, these bokeh objects know their ID on the browser, also on the Python side. So I push this ID. Here I have this enum replace bokeh data source. Enum is a widget uh, which has a communication between the Python side and the notebook side. And it, I have just this function replace bokeh data source which pushes this, um, this data source with its ID and the new data to the JavaScript side, and then it deconstructs it and puts that into the uh, data source 
into the bulky data source on the browser and then magically through uh, different callbacks the, uh, the graph is just redrawn. to reconnect again. Um, we have nothing here in this talk uh, thing. Wait. I have sometimes problems on this computer with the connection, but okay. okay. Now the connection is made. I'm, I'm asking to show the demo. <laughs> okay. Yes. Now, it's a really, yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's relative primitive. I'm oh. so excited. I work on Bokeh too. <laughs> Is it working now? Yes. <gasps> Think something. That's okay. What is it? Um, what are the lines mean? I can't speak because when I speak, then I have artifacts. Can you Morse code me the answers to my questions? How much I like it? It's actually an easy uh, abuse of this uh, technology to do Morse coding. Like, uh, I can also blink. Yeah, yeah. And I, 